so we are beginning the session now uh, so professor uh, manimaran is from vit uh, chennai from school of mechanical engineering he'll be talking about uh, modeling compressible flows using open foam uh, so over to you sir you can start the session uh, good afternoon everyone so um, let me introduce myself i'm professor manimaran from school of mechanical engineering at value and structure technology chennai so here in this uh, one hour lecture i'll be just introducing you about the compressible flow as well as how to model the compressible flows using open foam so here is my contents of my presentation so you can see i'll just uh, for the beginners who may be who may not be aware i'll just start with the compressible flow simple basics of the and theory of that next we will go to the what are solvers available on open, compressible flow in open foam then we'll just compare the solvers and uh, i will also show you some of the setups or uh, cases that i made for our understanding like for example if you see here at the bottom the external flow and internal flow can okay, i hope many of you know about the external flow and internal flow so here we in the external flow case we are just talking about free stream over a 2d ramp two dimensional ramp problem and two dimensional airfoil and internal flow problem is about the two dimensional ramp with walls the top one is also wall so it's a kind of internal flow and then three dimensional convergent divergent nozzles okay so this is for illustration okay so let me go into the basics of the compressible flow first i think uh, so just to give you a brief introduction about the compressible flow so it's all based upon the mach number and the compressibility factor you know that so mach number is defined as v by c the ratio of v to c that is local velocity to the speed of sound and compressibility becomes important for high speed flows where mach number is greater than 0.3 0.3 and less than 0.3 becomes the flow is subsonic and incompressible and we call mach number in the range 0.3 to 0.8 as subsonic and compressible whereas mach number between 0.8 and 1.2 is the transonic flow shock waves start up here and uh, it's a mixed subsonic and sonic flow region and greater than 1.2 and less than 3.0 we call the supersonic flow shock waves are present but no subsonic flow and mach number which is greater than 3.0 we call it a hypersonic flow or three and above okay so shock waves and other flow changes are very strong so very fluid physics changes a lot during this region like like for example when rockets flow i uh, fly at very high mach number okay what are the important effects of compressibility on the flow okay so these are the things which you should know before modeling the problem so first thing is a choked flow so i think you would have studied this in the convergent divergent nozzle that the gas dynamics course uh, where is the flow rate in the duct is limited by the stony condition that means mach number is equal to 1 okay so at that condition that is the maximum flow rate that can happen inside the duct this called as a choked flow condition next one we should also know about what is the sound wave or pressure wave okay there's nothing but rise and fall of pressure during the passage of an acoustic or sound wave the magnitude of the pressure change is very small in the case of sound wave whereas in the shock waves it is nearly discontinuous okay and the, the change is very rapid you can see the step change or a ramp change like that in the case of especially in supersonic flow and examples like explosions high speed flight and gun firing and nuclear explosions so, okay a pressure ratio of 2 is to 1 will cause sonic flow i think the exact ratio is i think 1.8 is to 1 so if, i i hope based on one dimensional calculation you might know already the value for p not by p already which we will see now okay so what are the applications main applications in the real day life okay so we see that nozzles and diffusers and converging diverging nozzles next turbines fans and pumps also we have then throttles flow regulators and obstruction and duct that controls the pressure drop like valves you have then simple theory we can apply it like compressible pipe flow okay like carrying the gas from one country to another country oil and gas at a high temperature or high pressure conditions so the brief introduction about the compressible flow will follow today is the control volume approach with steady one dimensional uniform flow conditions additional thermodynamics concepts are already i think we have known already are required for this analysis we will just restrict our analysis to ideal gases so let me i think i'll just go to some few slides about the basics of the derivation behind the equation of state and so on first the one first one what we should see here is the equation of state which we all know about this ideal gas law and just you know speed to rho rt and here rho is the density fluid density r is the characteristic gas constant 
which is nothing but R U by M. This is nothing but universal gas constant upon molecular mass. Okay. So I hope you know the value of universal gas constant here, 8314 joules per kilometer Kelvin. And whatever the fluid we use, here it is air. So that is molecular weight is 28.97. So the ratio appears to be 287 joules per kg Kelvin. And T stands for temperature here. So P is computed from rho RT, from idle symbol, simple idle gas law. Temperature is absolute and specific volume is volume per unit mass. So this is what we are showing here. So next one. So we, we have this uh, thermodynamic laws which we will apply here. So we know this P, V power gamma is equal to constant. This is nothing but we take inverse of volume as the density. Okay. And uh, so you, you have specific volume. Inverse of specific volume is the density. So we have P by rho power K is equal to constant. Or gamma is the K here. Ratio of specific piece, uh, specific heat at constant pressure to small constant volume. Just shown here. CV by CV is equal to gamma. Or K in this case, so this is nothing but 1.4. So here, dou P by dou rho becomes K P by rho, and C is equal to. From this, we can find out what is uh, the con space, uh, the speed of the sound. Okay, the gas, which is already found, and substitute here, we get root of gamma R T or K R T. So speed, C is nothing but the speed local local speed of sound. So C is equal to root of gamma T and uh, for air, the constants are given. And you can also see the other gases also like hydrogen air and some liquids also here. Okay, speed of uh, sound in water is 1490 meters per second compared to 314 air. So now how does the sound wave or pressure wave move depending on the conditions here? Point of a sound source and wave propagate. So like you see the ripples on a pond, okay, that's the the uh, disturbance is stationary, so sound sound source is not moving. You see the ripples of waves propagating from the source away from that, and it is like a sphere in the case of three-dimensional problem. And when the source is moving, now we can see that you can see the green dots just shown here, as uh, with respect to the speed of sound, which is less than that. Okay, and V is less than C. V is the the source moving with source velocity, and C is the speed of the sound. And when the sound source moving velocity which is less than that speed of the sound, we see that again waves are getting propagated, but still the sound source is within the wave domain. You can see that it is still engulfed in the wave domain. In the case of still incompressible flow or still sonic condition. Whereas if you see on the right hand side, you see that the green dots are moving farther from that uh, sound source. And when the waves are developed, then the sound source uh, has, moved, has moved away from that. You can see here, the waves are still getting that. That's why we feel the, the sound sonic effect of a fighter jet that is moving across as we hear the sound a little later, once, when, once it has crossed up or place. So in this case, we can define one angle called alpha. Sine alpha is V by C, which is a thing but one by M. So which is very useful in the case of calculations in gas dynamics. So very important concept in the case of compressive flow is the stagnation conditions, which you have studied already. So let me review it quickly. So it's nothing but we have a duct here. When the flow is happening, we assume that the flow has been brought to rest. And this condition is called a stagnation condition. So you can see here, H2 is equal to V1 square by 2 plus H1, which is equal to H0. So here the flow is happening at station 1, and the flow has been brought to rest at station 2. So the equation at 1 will be V1 square by 2 plus H1, and this side is H2. So this is called a stagnation enthalpy. Similarly, as we adiabatically bring the fluid parcel to zero velocity, there is a corresponding increase in temperature, which you know this. So V2 square by 2 plus CPT2 is equal to V1 square by 2 plus CPT1. So from which you can equate, like you can count, because v, V2 is almost zero, so V2 is brought to rest, okay, it's, so it's zero. So you can call it as T0, CPT0. And so, so you can rewrite this equation as T0 is equal to V square by 2C2 plus T, okay. So right hand side can be for the station 1 and left hand side is for the station 2. So this, from this what we can see is that how much temperature rise can happen when the flow is brought to rest. So the same conditions can be applied here to derive the relation for T0 by T in terms of Mach number here, just shown here. So we can introduce Mach number is equal to V by C. So T0 is equal to V square by 2CP plus T for idle gases. We know that equation 
if we have the equation CPT is equal to gamma R by gamma minus 1 into T. Okay, so in this gamma RT or KRT here is substitute as C square. The substitute in the case of the denominator case here, just divide by temperature on both sides. Then you can rearrange the equation to get gamma minus 1 by 2 M square plus 1. So here the ratio of temp stagnation temperature to static temperature is given as a function of Mach number. So similarly, once we get the temperature, we can also get the stagnation pressure ratio, stagnation density ratios also. So you can see here stagnation pressure is nothing but the same as that of stagnation temperature, but raised to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1. And density ratio is nothing but power raised to 1 by gamma minus 1, or k minus 1. The typical values for air, if you substitute it, you can see here T0 by T is 1.2 or P0 by P is 1.89, is close to 2. And when you have the Sony, Sony conditions, that is uh, star conditions, T star by T0 becomes 0 0.833, P star by P0 is 0 0.5283, then density and velocity. So, so what is the meaning of this? So the condition for bringing the flow to Mach number uh, 1, so we need to have at least the pressure ratio like P0 by P star of 1 by 0 0.5283. So that is the minimum pressure pressure ratio we should have in the in this isentropic condition case. Okay, so we have some assumptions followed here. So in the practical case, we should have higher than this. Okay, this ratio, one by five, one five two eight three. So you can see that it is close to one point eight nine. So we should have at least one point eight nine. So or we should have higher pressure ratio to maintain the Sony condition at the exit time. So next one we are thinking about talking about the. Is uh, steady isentropic duct flow which you have across in thermodynamics or uh, gas dynamics. So, to, how to re rewrite this equation for continuity, momentum, and uh, or Denol is equation just shown here, okay? So, in the differential form and logarithmic. So, you can see that dA by A is a relation which we are interested in now for especially devices like nozzles and uh, diffusers. So, which can be rewritten in this form like. Uh, from this case, d a by a is nothing but minus d rho by rho by minus dv by v. And uh, next, we have a momentum equation, which is nothing but dp by rho plus d v square by 2 is equal to dp by rho plus v dv. So you can substitute this equation, okay, the top equation, in the, for d rho by rho by left hand side of this second equation. Finally, we get this equation d a by a in terms is equal to dp by rho into 1 by b square minus d rho by dp. So now we take this equation and proceed further dp by rho into 1 by b square minus. So you can see this, this term is nothing but 1 by c square, which we already see in the definition of the speed of sound. So 1 by c square. Now we can rearrange this equation to get the final equation of this form. dA by a is equal to dp by rho v square into 1 minus m, capital M square. That is Mach number. So this equation is very useful in describing how the pressure varies in nozzles and diffusers and just varies flow conditions. So let us see this briefly here. So subsonic flow, we have, you know, this Mach number less than one and dA. So we'll see the condition uh, when the area when the area change in the geometry is less than zero. That means when the area is decreasing across the cross section, you can see here. According to this condition, Mach number is less than one and dA is less than zero. So dP, then dP will also be less than zero. It's mathematical. You can see that one minus, so M is less than one means you can take, for example, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 square will be 0.25. So this is a positive one and dA is negative. So only thing is only dP should be negative. So that's in that case, we have the four cases here, subsonic flow, supersonic flow, so, so, and then subsonic flow with a Mach number less than one, dA greater than zero here, opposite case of the first one. And then for one of the supersonic flow, M greater than one, dA greater than zero, and so on. So if you see the second case, supersonic flow, which is Mach number greater than one, and dA is less than zero. So in that case, opposite of the first case, Mach number, if it is greater than one, means you can take it as, for example, two, two square is four, one minus four is three, minus three, and uh, you see that dA is also negative, so dP should be positive here in this case. Okay, so in that case, we are at four cases now, so which indicates that whether the device can be a nozzle or a diffuser. So coming to the coming further, okay, into the relation between uh, dA by A and dV by B in m square. 
okay, which can also be found now. So you can substitute this relation again back into the momentum equation to get the equation for between dA by A and um, dV by V. Okay. So we can also comment about the velocity. How will they change with respect to the velocity as we did for the pressure change before? So if you see the simple case like m less than 1 and dA less than 0, dV must be greater than 0. So if you see that there what was 1 minus m square here and dP is there coefficient and here it is m square minus 1. So it's opposite sense. So you can see that dV must be greater than 0 in the case of subsonic flow and uh, d that is for converging area. And similarly, Mach number for a greater than 1 and dA less than 1, uh, sorry, 0, then you should have dV change in velocity should be less than 0. So which indicates the flow is decelerating in a converging channel if there's a supersonic flow at the entry. Similarly, in the case of subsonic flow and, and uh, for a diverging duct, the flow is decelerating. And for a supersonic flow entry with a diverging channel, the flow is accelerating. This is very peculiar. That's why we have a convergent and divergent nozzle. Okay, we have a subsonic flow at the inlet for the convergent divergent nozzle. And the outlet, you have a supersonic flow with a sonic condition somewhere in the throat. So this is the picture which I want to show you for that. The subsonic flow is just nothing but m less than 1, and which can reach m is equal to 1 at the throat minimum cross-sectional area, further it can accelerate further to get the max number greater than 1. So that's why if you see the rocket engine nozzles and all, it's like at the outlet, if you see that it is like a conical shape, so where the flow can reach hypersonic and hypersonic conditions, okay. Whereas the other condition like if you see here divergent and convergent problem, it is, this is not possible because the flow cannot be sonic at the central, uh, like at the midpoint of this. So this is not possible. Theoretically, it is not possible. So only condition which is possible for accelerating the flow from subsonic, subsonic to supersonic cases, convergent, divergent nozzle only. So, so we already saw, saw the chocolate condition. So the maximum possible pass flow through the duct occurs when the throat is at the sonic condition only. Okay. So we have the P0, T0, Rho0 condition, the stagnation condition and the flow can expand to the exit conditions like PE and V velocity in the receiver. So what are the maximum mass flow rate attained during this condition? So we can use the continuity equation simply. P is rho VA and we can substitute for rho is P by RT and then V as in terms of Mach number A is A area. So finally we get this equation M dot is to P into root of gamma by RT M into A. And further we can substitute for stagnation conditions. Ultimately we can end up with this formula where you can see that m dot is equal to p naught, a star, a star is the area at the throat into gamma by rt naught, gamma plus plus 1, 1 by 2, power gamma plus 1 by 2 into 1 minus gamma. So you can also find the critical area ratio that is required from this condition. What is the minimum area you should have at the throat based on this Mach number? So from this uh, uh, convergent, which is interesting is, I think many of you have seen this pattern here, whether the flow at the exit is, uh, over expanded or under expanded or the, uh, the design is at the exact pressure which is asked to maintain the so design condition. We can, we can also maintain the shock at the exit condition which is like normal shock at the exit condition or there is a, a fans in the case of under expanded jets or you have an oblique shock in the case of over expanded jets. So you can see accordingly the pressure the P by PC or uh, P by P naught to distance from the nozzle the different curves so you can see that uh, normal shock, if it is standing, you, you can see it as pressure. This is here, okay, pressure ratio maintained. So if the shock is somewhere here, you want to maintain somewhere in the nozzle, then the pressure ratio, what should be maintained? So that is also shown at C. And A, B is for subsonic cases, and F is a supersonic case. And uh, somewhere E and G, you can see that it's like a shock is, okay, it's like public shock. You can see the exit plane here. So case number, case for D, a normal shock standing at the exit. And if you have over expanded and under expanded, you have the E and G. So I think this comparable flow theory, I think we would have studied in gas dynamics. If you can extend it, can go to normal shock. We can study on oblique shock, expansion waves, and uh, fan of flow and relief flow, which is something like frictional choking and thermal choking. So you can also refer any textbook like SM Yahya or uh, any other flow textbook okay, on gas dynamics. So now coming to the solvers available in open form. Open form solvers on the flow. 
10. So you can see that there are various solvers available for compressible flow. How you can find them? Once you install open foam, you can just go to the, I think you would have installed open foam already in your computer. Just go to the tutorials folder of that. I think you are able to see my screen. So in this, you can see that many, many tutorials are available here, like from basic combustion, compressible and so on. So we take a look at the compressible case. So you see that many solvers are available here, like so acoustic foam, over row pimple dim foam and over row simple foam, row central dim foam or row central foam, row pimple adiabatic foam, row pimple foam, row porous simple foam, row simple foam, row sonic dim foam, sonic foam and sonic liquid foam. So each one has got its own application, the solver developed on it. Okay. So in today's tutorial class, I'm just going to tell you about row simple foam and sonic foam only. I'm just going to compare these two only, row simple foam and sonic foam. But I can give you an overview about other solvers like row central foam and row pimple foam, which we'll see now. So here, row central foam is nothing but it's a versatile solver. I can say that. I'll also show you an example at the end for row central foam from one paper. It's a density-based compressible flow solver based on central offense schemes of Kurganov and Tatmor. So it's like, I don't, I don't know whether you heard of uh, Riemann solver and uh, row solvers and so on. Similarly, this solver is based on density-based. Okay. So generally we have this, uh, you see everything would have come across many solvers like simple foam already or ICO foam, which is based on a simple algorithm, isn't it? Simple algorithm stands for, you know, that semi implicit method for pressure linked equations. Okay. And most of the solvers are right here in this, uh, except this row central form. And so, okay. It's all made of this uh, simple, simple algorithm. So, but row central form is not based on simple algorithm. It is based on density based solver, like central upwind schemes of Kurgunov and Tatma. Next one, we have dynamic mesh. Okay. With uh, support of mesh motion for it's just, topology changes, we have central dim foam. So DYOM stands for dynamic mesh. When you have change in the mesh motion, so we can accommodate this solver. Then row pimple adiabatic foam is for the transient. So, so pimple means, you know, that P1 is simple. It is mostly used for transient conditions. Okay, Pim P pimple means, I think you would have heard already, pimple foam like simple foam already. It is a constant problem, transient solver. For laminar or turbulent or weekly, the flow is for low Mac number aerocaustic applications. So when I say low Mac number, it means Mac number like above 0.3 and less than one. Okay. Next, we have a row pimple foam, same as that of pimple. Uh, okay, the previous one, the pimple adiabatic foam. Okay, here it, the application is mainly for HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and uh, we can also accommodate the mesh motion. This then over row pimple dim foam is for the transient solver for laminar or turbulent flow, okay, for compressible fluids, okay, for HVAC. So more or less similar, okay, over row, I think it is made up of oversight method of mesh motion, okay. And then row simple foam is for the simple foam which you have already you have studied already for incompressible flows. That same thing is external for compressible flow. Now. So row simple, simple stands for steady state solver using that semi-implicit semi method for pressure link equations. It is based on steady state. So I will also show you some of the files present in the schemes. Okay, if we scheme, which you can see in that, what kind of solver, which is mentioned there. So next is over row simple form. Over row stands for overset uh, mesh motion study. And a row, over row, row is, a, is like a density solver. Okay, but not it is based on density based method. It is a pressure based solver. Similarly, row porous takes care of the explicit porosity in the geometry. Then sonic foam. Sonic foam is nothing but a transient solver based on simple algorithm only. But it, the application is extended towards transonic and supersonic. Also, turbonic, uh, turbulent flow of a compressible glass. Okay. So next one, we have this sonic dim foam, which is nothing but which is capable of much motion, dynamic meshes and everything can handle. Next one, last one is the sonic liquid form, which in which compressible liquid can be handled in this case. So now I think, let me click this link to show you 
I think we already showed you in my computer, but anyway, I want to show it in that website, openform.com. So it's a standard tutorial available in the website also. So you can see here, steady turbulent flow. Okay, you can see that a backward facing step. This is the only problem. And then supersonic flow or a forward facing step and decompression of a tank internally stretched with solver. Okay. So I think many of you would have seen this. Anyway, let me show you a simple problem behind this. So you can see here the velocity is 10 meters per second, exit pressure is zero, and uh, initial conditions are given, boundary conditions are mentioned, and the simple form is used for this problem. Okay, this was, I think we would have solved this in the previous classes, previous uh, yesterday or DV for yesterday, and you can see the pattern here. And the next one, what we can see is a supersonic flow or a forward facing. So this is pertinent to our case here. So here you can see that forward facing step. Okay, you can see that the step, which is nothing but in this direction, uh, facing the flow here. Okay, so that is the forward facing step. Uh, you can see the dimensions, which is mentioned here. Mach number is three here. So UX is mentioned. Okay, inlet is taken from the Mach number three. Pressure is given as one newton per meter square. Just for understanding. So if you see the initial conditions are given and temperature is given as one Kelvin, this for understanding. Okay. So we can also scale up the problem. This is a scaled down problem. So this is velocity is given as three meters per second, pressure at the exit is one Pascal and temperature is one Kelvin. Okay. So dynamic viscosity is given. And appropriately, you can see the gas constants have been okay, taken care of. So here the solver used is a sonic form here, which is you can see here. Sonic form, and as I think you know how to define the problem using vertices in the mesh generation or block mesh case. So three blocks are created, and boundary conditions are created here, inlet, outlet, and so on. Okay, and uh, you can see the shocks developed after after running the case after some ten seconds. You can see here, so you can see the shock getting reflected and exiting the geometry. So this is the shock fronts which you can see it's by simple scale down problem. Next problem is about the decompression of the, you can see like a, this will instigate the problem of rapid opening of a pipe wall close to pressurize the liquid filled tank. Okay. Suppose if the tank is fully filled, the valve is suddenly open, you can see the pressure wave is getting propagated. Okay, you can see that, which can be modeled in a liquid uh, environment. So you can see that the boundary conditions are everything mentioned. So you use a sonic liquid form solver, the solver for compressible okay. sonic laminar liquid form. Okay. So we have, uh, you can see well, that uh, this geometry, yeah. so you can see here the tank is there. Suddenly if the valve is opened here, the pressure is with zero bar compared to the initial pressure of 100 bar. You can see here, how will the shock be developed? Okay. So that's what we're going to see here. So you can see the image is rotated now and you can see the pressure wave. So the pressure is just shown in 100 bar and exiting to the uh, zero bar pressure. You can see the shock is getting developed at 50 microseconds, 100 microseconds, and 150 microseconds. How the shock is moving the bound inside the interior domain that we can see. By refining the mesh, we can still further see where the shock front is. Okay, in this picture, we could not see the shock fronts. I think you done studied about how to refine the mesh by increasing the mesh count in every direction and so that we can capture the shock front clearly here. So these are the standard uh, tutorials available in the website, which I have shown in the openform.com. You can also verify, uh, you can also go and check it. Okay, this is what we see now. Okay, so now I already shown you how to comparison of solvers. We are just so as I said, a row row central form is the I will say that like density based solver using that uh, Riemann or row row flux methods, and other other things are nothing are based on simple algorithm. Semi implicit pressure method for pressure limit equations, where you get the equation like P is equal to over P. Okay, from that we will update the density. So now, in my case of plural, I will all suggest you to create a geometry using UNV file from the salon. Okay, and you can also modify the initial conditions in the zero folder for the velocity, pressure, and temperature in the case laminar. Okay. So I'll just show you how to say, set up the case okay, in my tutorial cases. And uh, these are the initial steps which you should carry out before modeling the compressible frame. First, you should have a geometry. 
then you should uh, have the initial conditions properly then you should define the properties of the flow and the fluid everything inside the constant folder next you should have a solver settings properly mentioned okay which you should have the system folder Con inside the system folder you should have control dict file fe solution fe schemes and fe options if it, if if needed okay and so on for example if you need porosity in the problem so fe options must be there in defining the porosity conditions so let me show you some of the results i got it so uh, anyway i want to show you the ps files before proceeding to the solutions here to compare the so let me show you the ram problem okay so initially i had zero only so inside the zero for this i think uh, this is a turbulent flow problem so then you have a constant folder here which defines this the mesh poly mesh file and then thermophysical properties which are defined here so molecular weight and cp and hf and transport properties like viscosity and rental number Similarly, turbulence method, turbulence properties like the omega FST model have been used in this problem. And then in the system folder, we have this control dict file, which defines the run conditions. Okay. A real simple form solver is used. Start at zero time and at 10,000 seconds. And I, I hope you know all these things which are studied in the earlier two days. So main thing what we should see here is the fe schemes okay fe schemes comparing between three which i will show here so what you see here is the the one which you i'm showing you right now is the steady state solver it is nothing but row simple solver row simple foam whereas this one is default euler for the ddt scheme d by ddt means what d by do by dot t the time derivative it is nothing but euler scheme here for this, the solver is a row pimple form, P I M P L E. Okay. Because we have the unsteady here. Whereas in this case, it is steady state, which is already mentioned in this. And I will also show you for the sonic form case. Again, Euler. Sorry, not sonic, it is a central form. Sorry. So you have the flux scheme, which is defined as curve now. Okay. So here, if you see that we have the interpolation schemes for the Van Lee flux splitting. Okay. So if you just go through, go to the internet and type Van Lee flux splitting, you will also get into many uh, PDFs. So one such thing I want to show you is that, uh, yeah. So we end up with a conservative form of equations. You can also see there's Riemann solvers in general form of rotated Riemann solvers. So like rotated hybrid. So we also have this. Um, so this Kuldunov scheme is also based on that, okay. So a central dim form is based on that. Yeah. So it's based on this. I think you can also take a look on this. So you can also take a look at this paper if you are interested from Journal of Computational Physics about the Riemann solvers also. So from which this is a purely uh, density based solver. So now I just want you to very, just show you this uh, FE schemes file in comparison between three scheme three solvers here. Okay. So you can see the interpolation scheme here is linear and here it is um, linear again. Whereas in the case of Corbino central row central form solver, you can see it is linear by default design for rho and u and t. It is based on like rho, you know, density and u is the velocity vector, t is the temperature. It is based on van linear interpolation. Okay. Which is defined in the papers. Okay. Now let me go and uh, show you the solution which I got from the different solvers. Okay, just for your understanding. So, which solver to be used for which problem? Okay, so we are here about uh, defending the case setup. So, first we should have a geometry. Next, we should have the initial conditions properly. Then, you should define the properties of the flow and the fluid medium properly. And then, we should also define the solver settings carefully. So with that, let me show you some of the results which I got with a row simple form. Okay. For the geometry like this. Okay. I'll, so I will also show you this um, para view, which I used it. Okay. For defining the conditions. Okay. For for showing the post-processing case for paste. 
So if you see here, this slide is showing the pressure contour on the left side and the velocity magnitude on the right hand side for a ramp geometry. A ramp geometry has got only the wall at the bottom. Other things everywhere is open to atmosphere. So if you see the flow is here is um, slightly pressurized only. If you see the pressure range is 1.0 and 10 power 5 to red color is 1.1 and 10 power 5. A slight change one day. Okay. For a slight change, you can see the change in the velocity magnitude. Okay. A small pressure developed here for which a small pressure velocity drop here. Okay. So now I slightly increase this pressure now from you see here from the previous side is 1.1 and 10 power 5 to 10 2.1 and 10 power 5. So I you can see that some wiggles are appearing in my case when I solved it using open foam. The same wiggles are uh, some disturbance like wavy pattern can be seen in the case of velocity magnitude magnitude also. Okay. So and also if you see here the velocity vector, the direction of that, if I zoom it near the wall, that corner place, you see that the velocity vector is also not properly pointed along the wall. So this poses a serious problem, right? So if you come across in my, my theory class, okay, in the beginning, like initial pressure, what is required for the Mach number close to one, so nothing but 1.89 is to one. Okay, so here we have changed. If you see the pressure ratio here, it is 2.1 is to five to almost like one into 10 power five. So the ratio is almost 2.1, it just should give you a Mach number of one using this row simple form. But we see that the row simple form solver is not able to handle this case for a, for a simple Mach number one. Okay, condition or close to Mach number one. So, so I just extend that case from the geometry of a ramp to a half oil here again. Okay, you see the pressure here. Um, it is, I think the pressure was, I think, I think it's close to, if you see this boundary, it's almost close to 1.1 to 10 to 5. And you can see that above and below the symmetric half oil, you can see that pressure is low and the Send at the stagnation point of that hole, you can see the pressure is higher. And somewhat you can see the velocity patterns also like meaningful here. Okay. So within this pressure range. Okay. But when I increase the pressure range, if you see here, previously it is 1.3, 1.4 and 10 power 5. And now it is extended to 1.8 into 10 power 5. Okay. Somewhat you can see the you can see the suction on the top and the bottom of the airfoil. And the stagnation pressure is also increased corresponding to velocity, or you can see that higher velocity at the top and bottom of the airfoil, and so on. Okay, stagnation point at the front of the airfoil is also seen. Okay, when I still further increase it from 1.8 and 10 to 5 to let me say here it's 2.2, okay, or somewhere somewhere, when you can see that the pressure is increased to like I think you cannot see the band clearly here, okay, it's somewhere close to uh. So here the inlet pressure, okay, the part field pressure, which I can see here is the 1.2. And now if I slightly increase it to 1.8 and so on, 1.8 into 10 power 5, here I'm saying the boundary. You can see that again the wiggle started to form here. You can see at the rear end of the airfoil. And the same the same wiggles is repeated and the velocity pattern also. So if you see further after some after some time steps, you can see that that there were like wiggles started to carried away by the started to be carried away by the flow or the back and you see after some time it has propagating to the front also thus it has modified see if you can see that uh the the wiggle okay the improper solution is propag propagating from the rear of the airfoil to the center and uh, you can see the same pattern just happening in the velocity also and if you see the velocity pattern of the okay like direction magnitude okay if you see the velocity pattern here in this region you can see that somewhere there's a returning flow and so on okay so it's in the solution which is not meaningful here okay so that's the pattern we have here so i can also show you the typical case here which i mentioned okay i you can just see here i'm at zero okay and that's for a Pressure. This is for the pressure. You can see how the pressure, the wiggle appears when the pressure is increased now. Okay. So, and suddenly you can see that there's a small 
change happening in the front side. Okay. So this we need to investigate. Okay. With this solver. Similarly, you can see that in the lower, okay, this is about the lower pressure. You can see. So let me show you for that air foil. Okay. Is this. Yeah. So here it is. So you can see that um, pressure is increasing. Okay. And suddenly you can see that, okay, the wiggle started up here and then going forward, and you can see that it is being carried away by the, the flow at the back. So how can we overcome this problem? It's a serious problem for solving the case. Okay, so we need to solve it. So we, I'm just marching from, so I'll tell you the solution a little um, time later. Okay, let me go to the different solver now. But as I already told you about internal flow in a 3D convergent divergent nozzle. This is a geometry, this is an inter inlet, and this is the outlet. And the cross section, mid plane section is shown here. So we can see that pressure. So pressure at the inlet is maintained here. Okay, like pi bar. And uh, you can see the pressure at the exit is one bar. And correspondingly, the velocity attained. Okay, you can see that we can see the velocity okay is increasing from inlet to the somewhere portion between the throat and the exit. So if we increase the time steps and uh, if you observe the region here, suddenly we see some instability happening. Okay, with this solver also rope in pulp form. Okay, in this internal flow. So so the problem can be due to the mesh, okay, and the time step which we know already. So we should take care of the meshing properly. We should have a sufficiently refined mesh to capture the flow physics and to accommodate the flow physics also. Next one is about the, the time step which you should allow. So typical time step of these problems at high speed flows, it involves microseconds or even less than that. So, so we need to work on only meshing and the time step but other than that it is also related to the solver also like for example it is rope pimple foam so which can accommodate the density variations so that's why we should go for a, a row central foam to handle the density based method which is very robust in that case so if you see if i trade the solution further and you can see that some very unmade okay non-meaningful solution appears to happen here at the top left okay you can see here and same is reflected in the case of velocity also in the case of row pimple foam so row simple foam and row pimple foam so you can see it's a pressure based compression solver solver that means pressure equation solved and density is related to the pressure by an equation of state so this solver follows a segregated solution strategy the solving separately not compiled method this means that equation for each variable characterizing the system is solved sequentially and the solution of the preceding units is inserted in subsequent equation okay the derivation of the pressure equation is similar to the one used in the income of the case. And uh, coming to the sonic form, okay. So another solver which I told you in the beginning, it's a transient solver for transonic case. Same thing is modified for transonic case, supersonic turbulent flow for compressible gas. So this can be addressing the wave dominated flow, this solver. High Mach number to have boundary conditions that do not reflect waves. So walls are reflective, but inlets and outlets are generally not supposed to reflect waves. Okay. So generally, if you see, we should have a walls are reflecting in condition, the waves, but inlet, we should not have a reflecting boundary condition. So we can also impose a certain Mach number range, like Mach number greater than one, and exit boundary case should not impose any kind of constraint. So the sonic value, sonic form is following the eigenvalue analysis, which is explained to separate or decoupled waves and work directly on these waves to either upwind or specify the appropriate condition. So I think if you have studied about upwind method, only this condition should be allowed, okay, like that, not for the other condition. So, so depending on the kind of wave, it may travel at the speed of u or u minus a or u plus a, where a is the speed of the sound. The sign of the wave speed tells you whether the wave is incoming or outgoing. So it depends upon the wave, okay, how it is generated, depending on the wave, wave the velocity will be updated. 
addition, the boundary condition is useful when shock waves are formed near the outlet. Otherwise, fixing the pressure of the outlet could result in spurious and numerical results if shocks are present near the outlet. So even in this case, like in draw simple form and draw pimple form, some serious mistakes can happen in the solver also if you're not properly taking care of this pressure at the outlet. In this open form here, the wave transmissive boundary condition attempts to reconsider this kind of non-defective scheme, but in a simpler fashion without full interfield coupling. Yeah. So this is not completely solved a case like compared to a row central form. This is not a density-based solver. Okay. Yeah, so you can refer this paper for further uh, conditions. So the typical outflow condition is mentioned here for a sonic form solver in the boundary. You can see here a type is wave transmissive in nature. So you can give the value of the pressure. Uniform 80,000, field is pressure field, gamma value is mentioned, phi is phi, volumetric flux field, rho density field is mentioned as rho, and uh, that is derivative of density. The, what is the derivative of density with respect to rho pressure? That variable is mentioned here, and the infinity and field infrared. Field, okay, field variable, okay, power field value, this applied to the rho, infinity field, okay. So all these are important in this sonic form solver, depending solution. So now when you can use the same problem in addressing by using sonic form, which are done with the previous case, if you see, remember, okay, let me show you, let me recollect that. So you can see that we started here with the row simple form, with from uh, pressure of, uh, started initial pressure of like 1.1 bar, okay, or close to one bar pressure. So you will see with respect to sonic form solver now. So you can see that, with the sonic form solver, you can see a smoothly, a slightly higher pressure, which results in a somewhat like shock wave, okay, like we're getting formed, slight shock wave is formed just before the ramp. Like a, you can see like blunt nose, lower of blunt nose. Okay, so the same thing is reflected in the velocity magnitude also. So you can see that velocity is being, see here the velocity is higher compared to the velocity here at the after the and similar in the case of uh, airfoil, which you can see here, the pressure has been increased to 4.9 10 power 5 here using sonic foam. Still, we can capture the, the shock here, the shock at the trailing edge as well as the leading edge also. Okay, so this condition is you can also see clearly in zoomed up portion here, the velocity in the shock has been captured. Now coming to the internal flow using the sonic foam, again, you can see that the flow has been accelerated towards the exit using the sonic flow condition, sonic flow order. So, so this region, this from this what we can see is the solver has been improved in the case of sonic foam and it is able to handle the case, even though you refine the mesh or uh, decrease the time step in the case of row simple form or row pimple form solvers, sonic foam handles it better compared to this other sonic form, row simple form and row simple form solvers. So we should define the solver properly, which you have to use. So that's why very different solvers are given in the compressible flow folder. So here is the problem, again, internal flow, which I tested it using sonic form. So you can see like the ramp problem, same geometry is used, but the top is different as a wall here. Now it becomes the internal flow problem. So you can see a strong reflecting shock here. So first initially pressure is increased. After that, the shock meets uh, three shocks, okay, intersection is present there, after which there's like an expansion fan. Again, there is a, a shock, which is again compression. So it is like a problem here, like in a scramjet, which you have a reflection. Uh, okay. So you can, if you want to compress the air at the inlet duct itself, then you can model using the sonic foam for a scramjet engine. Okay. So with this, I stop. Okay. I think, and before I end, I just want to show you some of the things from, uh, for your understanding, I think you can refer this GitHub page for, for example, Corbino scheme, which I should have showed you, and uh, FE schemes, which you can see it. And uh, you can also, I think I just want to show you this web page on. Uh, so you can also just take a look at this Simslog paper uh, uh, software. It's also free, I think so. And it compares the row simple form, row pimple form, and sonic form central form. You can see here. So, so row simple form, row pimple form can handle subsonic, transonic cases for Mach number less than one. So row simple form is for steady pressure based small, small density changes. As row pimple form handles transient pressure based small density changes with dynamic machine capability. 
whereas in the case of Mach number greater than one, you can use sonic foam or rocentral foam, depending upon the whether you want to use the pressure based solver and the density based solver. And uh, yeah, so that's all from my side. So I want to thank IIT Bombay CAD Fossil team and uh, School of Mechanical Engineering BIT Chennai to permit me to give this talk. Thank you. So if you have any queries, you can either talk and uh, ask me here, or you can also mail me at uh, this red email address onemaran.rbiit.ac.in. Thank you. Yes, sir, we have a question in the chat box. Are there any demand solvers in open form like row solver? Uh, presently, as I told you now, I think not completely row solver is there, but Kuruno solver, which I told, it's closer to that demand solver. You can take a look. Okay. Yeah. I'm a turbo machine engineer, and I would like to know which solver is compatible to simulate the flow through an actual compressor passage, where the flow at the inlet of rotor is subsonic and at the exit it is going high transonic yeah i think you would have seen my slides right so you can try with sonic foam i suggest you to try with sonic foam so okay. otherwise sonic. you can try with yeah row central foam okay. presently so, i think open foam has got only two solvers one is sonic foam and then uh row central foam so you have to see depending on what the mach number condition at the exit even sonic foam cannot handle uh, even supersonic okay, the conditions like that. So to be very careful, okay, and that. Or the time involved in computations will be very high. So I suggest you to go with the row central foam. Okay. Okay. So one more question in the chat box. What is the highest Mach number that can be handled by sonic foam? Yeah. So according to me, if you see that it's a trial and error question, okay, trial and error based on your application. So you can see that I have, I, I think I suggested in my case, it goes till 1.5 and so on, 1.5 Mach number. That's what I have tried. Okay. So you can also give a try. Can we implement time dependent boundary condition like varying in that velocity with time for another? Yeah, it is there. I think in the boundary conditions, you can have that uh, condition like uh, how much. Yeah, it you have to see the boundary condition type. Um, I think it is allowed. Yeah, with time dependence, you can also import the Excel file itself as an import. So you can better take a look at the tutorial folder okay i think in some of them I, i've seen that you can just import the time dependent boundary conditions also so yeah uh, how reliable is open for me we're making hypersonic flows and any particular solvers for same okay so i suggest you to go with a row central form solver only so i think uh, you know that open form is a uh, open domain so people may be developed and I wanted to show this actually, actually this problem okay, this paper, which I forgot to show you. Okay, if you just take a look at this paper, analysis of curious if open form solvers for the problem of supersonic flow around cone. Okay, from my Russian uh, European, Russian authors here. Okay, they have modeled the flow like supersonic flow like Mach number three. So I wanted to show you for this cone bot cone problem. Okay, flow over a shock cone. Okay, shock flow over a cone. Okay, you can see that. You can see a decent solution they arrived at using the row central form actually. And uh, I think they mentioned row central form. Okay, they used it. So you can also try with that. And they compared other solvers based on that row central form. Okay, sonic form and so on. So this paper may be a good start for your problem on hypersonic flows. And if you're interested, you can also, I think you know already, like you can also develop your own solver called hyper solvers, hyper form or something like that. Is it fine? Yeah. So thank you all for attending this. I would like to thank uh, Professor Manimaran. Professor Manimaran is our esteemed uh, executive faculty member, uh, uh, faculty partner of FOSI, and yeah. he has uh, guided uh, seven students as of now for semester long and summer internship projects. So yeah. thank you so much, sir, for taking out time and uh, attending this workshop, giving a, a, such a wonderful lecture today. Uh, we are grateful to you, sir. Okay. Thank you.